My guest, a former Muslim terrorist, says seven nations will rise up to destroy the Antichrist. My question is, will America be one of those nations? Next, on this edition of It's Supernatural. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, it's Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. I love the rarefied air of heaven. Now, many of you watch this show because you want to understand the supernatural, the invisible world of God. But if you are mentored in the supernatural and understand the power of God, but do not understand what God is doing on planet Earth right now. If you don't understand prophecy, then what good is all the power in the world if it's not released in the right direction? And I am so pleased to tell you that I have a guest that was born in Bethlehem. This guest, because he was born in the East, and because he's such a student, of the scriptures has got a paradigm for the end times that is so sound and so solid but it's different than anything you've heard before and it's not new it was many many centuries ago but it's just coming back right now for such a time as this my guest was a terrorist my guest was planning terrorism in America. My guest had bombs to kill Jewish people. Now, he's making a lot of news shows. Let's take a look. The problem is a massive racist ideology that is growing throughout the Middle East and the Muslim world. The man sitting next to me can certainly tell us he was a terrorist. A former PLO terrorist. A terrorist now living in the U.S. Former Muslim terrorist. And raised a Muslim. Fighting for the justice of Israel. We have to stand with Israel. Judea is the heart of the Jewish people. Walid Shobat. Walid Shobat. Walid Shobat. One word caused me to believe in the truth of the Bible. And that's the word Israel. Hello, Sid Roth here with Walid Shobat. And, uh, Walid, you were born in Bethlehem. Now, the last time I was in Israel, Bethlehem is not like the Bethlehem you were born in. But uh, your father, uh, uh, his father, or your grandfather, uh, was uh, Husseini's good friend. And Husseini was the Mufti of Jerusalem, good friends of Adolf Hitler. Why did Adolf Hitler like Islam so much? Well, he saw it as a more fitting religion and a more fitting system for even Germany. In fact, very few Westerners know how much Adolf Hitler did compliment Islam. And he actually criticized what he called the flabby religion of Christianity. And because Islam gave pride to people, he was fit for the motherland, or fatherland in this case, for Germany, that they would have this kind of pride that would call for war. That because Islam was a religion of war and Nazism had a lot in commonality with Islamists. And their view on Jewish people and Christians. Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, it was a natural fit for Adolf Hitler. Well, Walid was born in Bethlehem. His mother uh, came from America. Uh, she was Christian but didn't understand her religion that well. Uh, married uh, Walid's father. And for 30 plus years, your mother wanted to escape. Why couldn't she just leave him? It's not that easy. She attempted to escape, and uh, she had to get her paperwork together because she had nothing. And so she had to remain one evening in the uh, King David Hotel, in which when she dashed to the embassy the second day, 
they were waiting for her at the entrance of the uh, Council General in Jerusalem, the embassy, and she was taken back to the House of Obedience, of course, because Islam mandates that the husband really is in control of the wife. Now, when you say House of Obedience, you mean uh, Islam? Bayt al -ta that's what Islam calls it, the House of Obedience. In other words... But wait a second. Our last couple of presidents have said Islam is a peace-loving religion. <laughs> Islam is not a peace-loving religion. So why do they say that? Because uh, they have to cloak something that is so obvious. No one walks around saying Judaism is a loving religion or a peace-loving religion or Christianity is a peace-loving religion. Only Islam has to be cloaked because it's very obvious to people that that's a major problem. Even at the BBC, I remember doing a show at the BBC in England, millions listening, and I was criticized throughout the whole show. In the end, the interviewer, who was criticizing me all throughout the show, asked me a question. She said, uh, Walid, are you not afraid for your life? I says, only a person that knows subconsciously the truth that Islam is not a peaceful religion would ask such a question. You were raised to hate the Jew, to hate Israel with such a passion. Absolutely. I mean, they talk about replacement theology. We believed in replacement theology of literal replacing the Jews and destroying them. It's part of Islamic eschatology that we learn in school, that the day of judgment will never happen until the Muslims wipe the Jews out. His dad married a, a, a woman from America and tried to uh, convert her to Islam, unsuccessful. And Walid married a woman <laughs> that, uh, that, that believed in Jesus. And to convert her to Islam, he took a year to read the Bible and come up with his ammunition to set the household, all the, the house of Islam. So uh, what did you find when you read the Bible and thought for yourself? I found the most amazing things I would ever find all throughout my life. By the time I read the first in the beginning of Genesis, I will put enmity between you and the woman. The devil always hates the woman. All cults give a second status to women. By the time I got to Daniel, I've realized that there is this issue of the Antichrist. And Daniel describes the Antichrist uh, as a person who makes a covenant for seven years, a false peace mm -hmm. treaty. Uh, as a Muslim, I always know the Mahdi is the one that brings seven years of a peace treaty with Israel. So, you, so what, you, what he's saying is there is a Messiah figure in Islam, and he notices that the Bible describes the Antichrist with the same characteristics as the Messiah figure for Islam. What else did you see? Well, all the characteristics of the Antichrist are pretty well described in Islam as well as the good guy. You know, uh, <laughs> so they're being, they're being set up. Absolutely. If, 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 if you're Muslim, do you realize that one is right and one is wrong? Well, why did you decide the Bible was right? Why didn't you just start, decide the Quran was right? Now, that's a tough question, because I had to go through the Bible and examine one word, Israel. When you run into Israel in the Bible, in Amos chapter 9, verse 15, it says, I will plant them in their land, that is Israel, and no longer shall they be pulled out of that land. So if the Bible is a historic manuscript, and this is where the, many of the historicists make a mistake, if it's a book on history, God plucked them out, the Babylonian diaspora, the Roman diaspora. It's talking about one verse that it's impossible to pluck Israel out. That was the Israel I lived under. And by the time I reach Isaiah chapter 63, we talk about Isaiah 53. How often do we talk about 63? 63 talks about the battle of the Messiah when he threads the wine press of the place called Edom. And then he explains something. He talks about how God became Israel's savior. So he, God, became their savior in all their afflictions. He was afflicted. So he tells us how he became Israel's savior. He suffered the same way Israel suffered. He suffered the same way in the Holocaust. If six million Jews died naked, the Messiah died naked. If six million Jews starved, he also was hungry. If six million Jews were in the ghettos, he was also in prison. If six million Jews were silent, we will never find a footage. And I watched hundreds of hours of footage of the Holocaust when I was Palestinian back in Israel. Never could find a footage where a Jew made a peep when he died going through the ovens. It was amazing. And people say that you're going too far with this interpretation. Jesus rose on the third day. Are you saying Israel rises on the third day? Absolutely yes. Read, when I read Hosea 6, I was shocked. 
Hosea 6. After two days, he will revive us. Two thousand years, he will revive us. So we may live in his presence. Everything parallels the Messiah, parallels Israel. Huh. Well, what, what did you find out about Lucifer? Well, that's very interesting. Because by the time you reach Isaiah 14, it talks about this person who is the king of Babylon, who comes as the Antichrist in this case, as explained other places in the Bible. He's called Hilal ibn Sahar. I went to the Hebrew. Hilal ibn Sahar is a very much Middle Eastern term because Hilal, which Hebrew means brightness, it also means crescent moon. Crescent moon? Absolutely. Lucifer means crescent moon? Hold that thought. Wait till you find out about the seven nations that he found that will defeat the anti-Messiah. I wonder if the United States of America is in that seven. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to... It's supernatural. This is a wake-up call to America and the world. You need to be prepared for the prophetic events about to take place on planet Earth. God has supernaturally downloaded to Walid Shubat a revelation of the end times that is a major paradigm shift from what most Bible scholars have been teaching. And now he wants to share it with you. Call now and get Walid Shubat's prophetic hardcover book, God's War on Terror, and his four-volume DVD teaching series, Islam, Prophecy, and the End Times, all for a donation of $49, shipping and handling, is included. Ask for offer number 9103. In this groundbreaking book and prophetic DVD teaching series, you will find out the real reason the citizens of Egypt, Libya, and other Muslim nations are rising up demanding their leaders step down. Understand that Bible prophecy clearly reveals that the Ten Nation Alliance will not be Europe, but Muslim nations. Find out what the scriptures say about the United States' role in Bible prophecy. Learn why the Muslim nations are set up to follow the Antichrist and how a multitude of Jews and Muslims will receive Jesus. Jesus as their Messiah. It's the most extensive research done in history regarding the Bible from a prophetic understanding from a Middle Eastern lens. This will give a shocking evidence of how much the Bible predicted about the threat of Islam. Don't miss out on getting Walid Shubat's prophetic hardcover book, God's War on Terror, and his four-volume DVD teaching series, Islam, Prophecy, and the End Times, all for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9103. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9103 or log on to Sid Roth. Dot org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Walid Shabbat. And Walid was born in Bethlehem. He was raised to be a terrorist. He was bred to be a terrorist. He hated the Jew. He hated Israel. He wanted to kill Jewish people. I've been wanting to ask someone who was raised that way this question. And here's my question to you, Wallet. I have been at the museum where the Dead Sea Scrolls are. The Dead Sea Scrolls predate the Quran. Islam says that the Torah was corrupted in certain areas and the Quran is pure God. If the Dead Sea Scrolls are word for word the Torah and they predate the Quran, which one was corrupted? Well, the Quran is the corruption of the Torah and the Bible. While we accused the, the Bible of being corrupted, when I read the Bible, I realized the Quran was simply borrowing things from the Bible and borrowing apocryphal manuscripts from but, the Bible. But it mixed up a lot of things that were in the Bible, which the Dead Sea Scrolls that predate the Quran prove who did the mixing. Beyond shadow of a doubt. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, I went to the Israel Museum as a teenager, and I was wondering, I was looking at the Isaiah Scroll. It's the most amazing, fascinating archaeological mm -hmm. relic they have. And I always wondered, like, why does it speak Hebrew? It's in Hebrew. And we sang the song, Al Ard Tatkalam Arabi, Al Ard Al Ard, as Palestinians. The land cries out in Arabic. But there is a relic there that says it was crying out in Hebrew. That shocked me beyond belief that the Jews existed in that land a long time ago. And by the time you examine the Dead Sea Scroll and you begin to read the Bible, you find out there's nothing different. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. Well, let me ask you this question, because time is slipping away. 
you have a paradigm that actually is an old paradigm for 